Good morning, everybody. We are off to interview the owner of Ties.com, Omar. And we're gonna go hang out with him a little bit, ask him some good questions. And as you can see, we're gonna take the Lambo for all my super fans. It's still here. Let's go. This location. Omar, thanks for this man. The, the fans have been asking for it. I've been wanting to do it. Uh, this is a great opportunity for us or for me to learn more about kind of what you've done and where you've come up from and for the audience as well. They love the interviews. So um, if we could start briefly with you introducing yourself and kind of where you're at, just you know, real quick minute or two and then we'll jump in. Sure. First of all, happy to do it and thank you for thinking of me. Um, it's an absolute honor. Ever since I've met you, I've been Thoroughly impressed with everything that you do, so for sure, super excited to do this. Um, for those who don't know, uh, which I assume is a lot of your audience, my name is Omar Said. I'm the co-founder and CEO of a company called Ties.com. Ties.com is the site that ties your outfit together. You like that? I like that. Good. Yeah. Um, Ties.com has been around um, for roughly 18 years. I've been part of it for nine years, de facto running the company. Um, and um, we are a privately funded company. We've never taken any outside funding. So okay. ostensibly the premise of the business has been um, doing what we love and then focusing on our fundamentals. Right. So we don't have any arbitrary metrics that we chase. Okay. Um, so we are not looking for you know, X number of Instagram followers or um, Y number of uh, email subscribers, what we're looking for is building a fundamental business and that for us started off with one idea that has now morphed itself into um, what I call a very small vertically integrated company. So we do okay. everything from product design to, um, to production. So we have our own facilities overseas yeah. um, and we have um, uh, people on the ground overseas to marketing, distribution, customer service, QCing, everything happens in-house, including wow. the code platform. So one of our founding mm -hmm. business partners is a, um, a tech co-founder. Okay. So everything happens here in-house. Yes. That's dope. Yeah. And that's rare nowadays. Right? Yeah. Very rare. Yeah. Uh, so take us back, dude. You said so it's been around for 18 years and you jumped in nine years ago. Now, was yeah. that premeditated? Was that by chance? What did that look like coming up to that point and then from there to now? Sure. Um, yeah, so a lot a lot like your story where you know you were you excelled at being an athlete and then at one point you said I want to do something different. Yeah. Um, so it was for me also um, um, I was in college and I decided that I wanted to drop out. By the way, I don't condone anybody dropping out. <laughs> um, I want to be clear about this, but I don't believe that college is for everyone. And, it not, not, and that's not the way you should be thinking about life in general, mm -hmm. uh, in these sort of compartmentalized ways. Um, so I dropped out of school, pursued my first business with my uncle, um, had a very, very successful exit for, you know, some 22 year old yeah. at the time. Um, and then went back to school. I made a mistake to go back to school. Um, and then I doubled down and went to grad school, yeah. which was even worse. Wow. Um, and in grad school, I had started my second business. Um, and that went uh, relatively successful also, and we um, had a really good exit from that also. Um, and while I, was, I had just finished grad school and I was making a decision about whether or not I wanted to finish law school and whether or not what I wanted to do, and I started a consulting company and had done very, very well for myself. Um, and it was at that point where I realized it wasn't very rewarding. And then I met, um, so this is in 2010, I met my now business partners, David and Morgan, and they were having sort of massive scaling issues. Mm -hmm. It was right after the market had sort of tanked in 2008 yeah. and they were hemorrhaging a ton of cash and they were trying to figure out how to leverage the resources that they had built over the years. Right. Um, and so that's where I came in um, and then we just sort of pivoted the business model yeah. a tiny bit and um, here we are in 2018 sort of dominating the industry right. now. Nice, dude. Yeah. Nice. So would you say right now you have one or two major competitors that maybe they're not aware of? Um, 
I, I, I would I, I wouldn't like to talk about it <laughs> <laughs> no I mean you know so in, in live competition is really yeah. good and you know sort of, um, I was actually um, I'm, I'm reading a book um, and, uh, by Peter Thiel um, zero to one and you know Peter Thiel is one of those guys who says um, competitiveness is not the same as um, it's not, competitive competition in um, uh, competition and um, um, oh, cap com competition and capitalism aren't synonyms, right? right. And so, um, in order for, for capitalism to survive, it's devoid of competition and vice versa. Right. So, but the truth is, competition in itself is inherently what motivates you, it's what mm -hmm. keeps you on, you know, sort of um, that, that hunger for drive because there's right. someone always above you, right? right. Um, and there's always a goal that you're chasing, and when if there is no competition, that's mm -hmm. where sort of like complacency sets in. Right. And so for us, you know, we weren't the giant in this space, and so yeah. we were aiming at it. Mm -hmm. And I always tell people because I get this question asked a lot about how to get to the top. Um, I tell people the the difficult part isn't getting to the top. The difficult part is staying at at Stay, the top. Yeah. And so I've, and I'm a huge believer of that. I'm almost more fearful of getting to the top as it is for me to find out that there is someone at yeah, the top, right? Because right, right, if there's someone at the top, then you paint a target on their back and then right, you go right, chasing right, 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 right. But you realize the minute you hit it, then you've got a target on your back. And and, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And so for me, it's it's much more fun to stay at the top than it is yeah. um, being worried about like the competition. Yeah. So. so if we could sum up maybe in the last eight or nine years, maybe like the top three things that you believe has helped that upward trajectory, sure. you know, what do you think that would be? Um, number one, having uh, consistency and persistence, right? So I always tell people be respectfully consistent and be diligently persistent about everything that you do in life, whether it's reaching out to somebody you want to do business with, whether it is trying to hire somebody, whether it's taking your business to the next level, whether it's trying to add a new product line, whatever it is, consistency, it's sort of what it's overly underrated. And I think we focus so much on whatever the new shiny thing is, yeah. and if we don't see results right away, then we immediately um, we immediately sort of forget about what our goals are. Yeah. And so being persistent about, and, and, and being sort of faithful to, to your dreams, and I think is something that's sort of lacking. I think that's lesson number one. Um, lesson number two is something that we just talked about outside, is um, uh, having this sort of like fortitude to say, the journey itself is enjoyable. And the earlier you realize that, the better life will be for you and sort of experiencing that journey, not just sort of like in this half-hearted way, but when you reach these little milestones that you celebrate it. So let's say your goal is to hit a million dollars that year, or your goal is to buy a Lamborghini, or your goal is to you know um, go on that vacation or fly first class or live in a penthouse. Those goals themselves are the road to those goals is very arduous and you constantly have to be on this sort of like um, grind to get to those goals. Yeah. However, you might want to enjoy the sort of um, little little um, milestones that you hit along the way. You and I talked about this a yeah. little while ago, but you know, maybe you want to treat yourself a little bit like parking your car in a valet even if you can't afford it, right? Yeah. Or, or maybe um, on that journey to hitting a million dollars, you've hit two hundred fifty thousand dollars, and you want to you want to sort of celebrate that, right? Right, right? And so I think I think enjoying the journey is a big big component of that. Um, I think um, I mean these are sort of like macro sort of, of course, journeys, yeah, right? Yeah. That we're that we're talking about. Um, I think another thing that's important um, is perhaps. Um, making time for the things that really matter in your life, like family and friends, and not necessarily ostracizing yourself mm -hmm. cons consistently. And I think I, you know, I, that's probably if anybody you know sort of knows me or you know has has been a part of my life, they know that that I'm a big critic of this for myself also because I spent so many of my so many years of my time sort of being ostracized and really focusing on. What I thought was really, really important, which was building the business and not really focusing on anything else. Yeah. And um, you know, I, I have missed countless of weddings because I was on a business trip to China, or I've missed countless of, of, of bachelor parties with my friends, and 
you know, and, and while these may seem like, oh, you, you know, parties or whatever, but there is something to be said for taking a, t- a little bit of time to smell the roses. Right, right. Um, and maybe more will come to me as we go along with this with this interview and maybe yeah. we can cut that in. Of course, yeah. yeah. You know, one thing that I've always told people that um, I did along the journey as well that I feel is missed is no matter where I was along the journey, I'd always take a look back and be like, wow, look how much I've progressed in the last week, months, two months, three months, because they feel like I haven't reached the goal yet, I'm nothing yet, until yeah. I reach the goal. Yeah, when you look back the last six months, you're like, I'm a different person now. Yeah. And just that in itself inspired me and excited me more. Yeah. You know, seeing maybe how I would speak to a customer in the beginning, nervous yeah. and shaking. Yeah. And six months later, I wasn't the best yet. Yeah. But I was like, man, I'm way more polished. I'm sure. looking at the old recordings and listening to myself. I'm like, man, I've progressed so much in such a small time. But so many people are only focused on like the light at the end of the tunnel. They feel like until I get there, I'm not happy. I'm not satisfied. Yeah. Nothing's going yeah, well. Nothing. Everything's going wrong. Sure. You know, and they create this like chaos. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and it makes it that much more difficult when you yeah. don't reach them, right? Or you don't reach it in enough time yeah. that you've allotted for yourself. But you know, that's maybe like the third thing that we, or the fourth, the third thing. I don't know what number we're on that we can talk about. Also, is um, um, having perspective. And I actually mm-hmm. watching some of your YouTube's um, and watching some of your, yeah, or listening to some of your podcasts. This sort of reiterates yeah. um, this point even further. Having perspective is really, really important, right? And so, in the context of, of whatever else is happening in your life and sort of what you're trying to achieve, having perspective is really important from how far you've come in, in your in your journey, and not to necessarily focus on everything else that everyone else is achieving, right? People have different circumstances in life. They have have other opportunities. Their timing in life is different. Mm-hmm. There's so many different variables into what goes into what you perceive as someone else's success versus your success. And so I absolutely believe in, in, in to answer your question, um, and what are the things that have made me successful in the last ten, nine years is the ability to sort of develop perspective over time and have a level of emotional intelligence and realize, okay, so I may have friends who've built $100 million companies, but okay, but they have different life opportunities, right? Timing in their life is different. Maybe they have different business partners, maybe, uh, they themselves were, were, were smarter. Maybe they worked harder than I did, or perhaps it was different. Different. They met different um, opportunities while building a product. Yeah. Um. In 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 all of that, their their circumstances are so varied, and there's so many different variables that it's diff. It's difficult to say, oh, I am, and and I absolutely uh, try not to do this. I don't say, oh well, I should have been at that level. Yeah. Um. Because. Comparing yourself in that way right. is sort of a down world spiraling into nothing. Yes, else. yes, so, absolutely. Yeah. Um, a question I always get from viewers, and they always want to know about anybody we interview, and this is more like a can like a macro thing. Is uh, they always want to know what people's morning routines are. Sure. So I want to ask you: Do you have like a morning ritual or yeah. something that you follow every morning that has made getting up easier for you, or made you getting into the day more yeah. powerful, or giving you a good mindset? Sure. Can I time one second? Sure. I just want to fix your microphone sure. before you ask the next question. Just start going down. Oh, okay. Cool. Okay. Cool. Um, so morning routines, absolutely. Um, I, I believe in somewhat structured sort of um, sort of way. I, I'd like to think that like the first hour should be kind of an on an autopilot so that it's easier way into the day. Mm-hmm. So the first thing I do is when I wake up is um, sort of affirmations of what my goals are. Yeah. So I look at my long-term go- goals and short-term goals that is a daily reminder of what I'm chasing, yeah. um, sort of in life, mm-hmm. in, in family, in yeah. business. Right. And so I, it could be anything from like, maybe I'm trying to buy you know a vacation house. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe my wife and I are trying to have a baby. Maybe. Uh, I'm trying to, you know, like do something for my parents, yeah. whatever those goals are. I like, I like to sort of consider those goals and remind myself like why I'm getting up that morning. Right. Um, so I do that, um, very early on. Um, and I'll tell you about sort of like toxic things you do in the morning versus what I, what, right. what I do or I've developed over the years. Um, so that's the very first thing I do. And then, um, sort of wake up, um, bathroom time. And then the next thing I do is immediately... Um, is take a cold shower Um, and I like to do as freezing as possible and I promise you guys it cuts down on the level the the amount of coffee you drink it alerts you right away it resets your body 
Yep. Um, not only that, but it also like builds your immune system. So there's all of these great things and it's natural and I absolutely believe in these cold showers and you know, you do it as well. Absolutely. And you know, now like sometimes uh, I'll, I'll, I'll take like a slightly warm shower and I'm like, ew, this is weird. You yeah, know, like yeah, if yeah. it's like, I'm like, ew. <laughs> like it doesn't even yeah, feel like yeah. a shower. So the cold shower is really important. And the minute I'm out of it, um, I do this new thing now where I weigh myself because I'm, I'm so cutting back on carbs, cutting down on sugar. Um, uh, I don't drink any soda, um, so I kind of like to monitor to see like how my weight's doing. And it's not like a good sort of uh, litmus test for health, yeah. but at least it, keep, it allows me to keep sort of in, in order of what, what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. um, and then, um, uh, so when I get ready, when I'm brushing my teeth and, you know, hair, gel, makeup, uh, when I'm doing all that stuff, I like to watch um, documentaries. So, um, you know, you spend anywhere from 15 to 20 minutes in front of the mirror, brushing your teeth, putting gel on, that kind of stuff. And yeah. so for me, I like to use that time as much as I can. And then uh, I immediately get in the car and that gives me somewhere between 35 to 40 minutes in the car driving to the office. And for me, that's sort of me time. Um, and that I spend any which way I like to do sometimes. It's listening to um, music and I listen to Travis Scott and ASAP Rocky and yeah. Uh, all that stuff, <laughs> uh, or it's listen listening to a podcast, yeah. um, audio book, or making a phone call, whether it's to our team in China or my my, yeah. my family, and so that's like I said, that's me time, and I like to do that, and so and that's when I come into the morning, and I usually like to walk in the um, in the office somewhere between seven to seven thirty, and that gives me um, usually there aren't a lot of people in the mm -hmm. office during that time, and that is where I do deep work. Yeah. Um, and so until nine o'clock or so, I'd like to not necessarily answer emails. I'd like to really stay off of social media, which is really hard for me because uh, I'm like constantly on Instagram. Yeah. Um, but that's where I really do deep work, mm -hmm. and that's the deep work is what uh, moves the needle for anybody who's a CEO right, or right. a founder or mm -hmm. anybody who wants to make sort of changes in, yeah. in other people's lives, and so. I spent about two hours or so working on projects that are going to move, move the needles for us. And then around like 9.30, 9, 9.30 or so, you know, by this time I've had a cup of coffee. Um, most people are in the office and then sort of my my day changes, but that's sort of morning routine. Right, right. Yeah. And then that's, that's cool, man. And you see, and at least my experience from a lot of people who are high up there is you see a similarity, right? The morning time is their own time, right? They are educating themselves. Like you yeah. said, even in front of the mirror, you're listening to something. Yeah. You're doing the cold shower, right? Yeah. You're getting up early. You're getting in the office early. You're yeah. getting the important stuff done first. Yeah. And I preach that all the time, but it's good to hear it from somebody else because they get the different perspective, even though we're in completely different industries, yeah. doing completely different things. Yeah. Yeah. There's some similarity there. Common denominators, right? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think Tony Robbins said uh, success leaves clues. Yeah. Right? So uh, that's why I like getting different perspectives because apparently me saying it over and over doesn't <laughs> yeah. always work. Yeah. So to get someone else that's super successful saying it, it's like, okay, now you'll finally do it. You know, Tony Robbins, by yeah. the way, takes, I don't know if you know this, but he gets up and he jumps into the pool. That little, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It's great. Yeah. Um, uh, here's another one, man. I kind of want to shift gears. Sure. What, what would you say, uh, I love asking this question, was maybe... At any point, you can say, it doesn't have to be in just in the last eight or nine years, that you would say was like one of the most challenging situations of your life. Like, especially if you zoom into like business. Yeah. Right? Um, yeah, maybe about um, four or five years ago, I had just gotten married and the business was, you know, we were trying a lot of new things. And, you know, I always like to tell people, no matter what you, what sort of level you achieve, there's always the next level for you. Yeah. And in order, complacency comes from a place of sort of comfort. Yeah. And so I always like to put myself in this area of discomfort for me to grow. And you can't grow if you don't, if you don't, um, if you're not standing, if you don't stand up for something, if you don't invest in yourself, if you don't invest in your business, um, it's hard to grow. And so about five years ago, I, was, I had just gotten married and we had planned and slated um, to invest a ton of our sort of like personal capital um, back into the business mm -hmm. and um, you know it was financially it was a really really tough times I tell the story now because I kind of carry it as, as um, both a chip on my shoulder but a valor a, you know a, a, a sort of a war wound that I um, that I walk around with but there was times where we had just renovated these offices 
and you know we we were doing you know snacks and, and, and nap rooms and paying people really well but you know my business partner and I were sort of like yeah. eating last and you know they always say you know they say lions eat first um, the truth is um, that only works when there's you know enough food to go around you certainly yeah. can't like you know it might work in the jungle, but it's really difficult to make that work when other human beings are. You depend on them to help grow the business, right, right, but right. you're not paying them, right? Yeah. And so what we had people, and our internal sort of like conversation was, you know, let everybody else eat like kings. Um, but yeah, we were paying these massive salaries, but I couldn't afford to eat lunch. And wow. basically, I would just work through the day, and then I would go home, and I had these like top ramen that I would eat. And, you know, it, was, it, it kind of reminded me of college, but even in college, I yeah. lived really well, so yeah, it yeah. wasn't like college. <laughs> but um, that was a really, really difficult time that, um, that like, tests, you know, your convictions. Absolutely. Because um, then you're like, wait, I'm, you know, I'm, I had just turned 30. Yeah. And I was like, man, at 30 years old, you know, while my friends are driving exotics and I, I had to downgrade my car. I was living um, with my wife in this two-bedroom apartment where... Our door, uh, the, 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 the view was the door to the bathroom, and we were, you know, like we couldn't even afford two buck chuck from, from Trader Joe's. Yeah. And, you know, like I was, you know, like driving a really, you know, normal, like, like a piece of shit car, and like we were, you know, like it was just, it, t it tests everything in your life, and you're, and you know, now you're like, wait, I'm responsible for another human being who, who I just married. And, you know, like, in, in that's where sort of your commitment to your own success mm -hmm. comes in. Yeah. And that's when all the little demons you have inside you, all those little um, opinions that you hear from the peanut gallery, right? Like those people who like from the bleachers or what I know, or from the peanut gallery are like, oh, I told you you shouldn't do that. The hecklers. <laughs> the hecklers, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, I like to say that, you know, let those people from the cheap seats uh, heckle, you know, they're in the cheap seats for a reason. Right. But that's when all those doubts sort of like, you yeah. know, then, then you're driving home and you're like questioning your, 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 your self-worth, your, your, the convictions. And then, you know, all the little doubts creep in, right? Especially right. like I grew up in a non sort of uh, entrepreneurial household where, you know, my dad was always like, or my mom would be like, why are you doing this? Just go get a job. Yeah. Why, why are you worried about this? Right. And then, and then you're like, and so it's at those times when you're like, no, I really believe in this. Yeah. I, I think we're on to something yeah. and, you know, don't be foolish about things, but you know, when you see indicators for success, mm -hmm. you double down on it. And yeah. that's, and you, like I said, when you're consistent, consistent and you're persistent, it yeah. all works yeah. out. Right. You know, and that's really inspiring to hear, man, because I always, I always tell the people that I teach and that study for me is, you know, what are you willing to give for this yes and I, I really find it hard to find people who have not sacrificed a tremendous amount and yeah. gone through those times i have too right yeah. like I've, i literally documented my journey when i yeah. started and people saw me starving when i started in real estate so yeah. i had braces on yeah i was like hey i'm using my dad's suit you yeah. know that he handed me down because i didn't own a suit i couldn't sure. afford one yeah and that's the stuff that i think people need to hear more yeah because when they face it, they can be like, oh, Omar did it, oh, Brian did it, oh, this guy did yes. it. And I think that does, even though it's still tough, it makes it a little bit easier. Yeah. I remember every mentor I had in real estate said, you're going to be tested, you're going to be in tears, which I was my first year like three times. Like, okay. can I do this? Yeah. The hecklers, all yeah. the doubts creeping in. Yeah. But because we don't film that and put it on, people think, oh, it's inspiring to hear, but it's not really happening. Yeah. You know? And I remember there was, you know, months at a time where I would question myself, like every night I'd go to sleep, you know, kind of upset. And I was like, man, but I got to make it happen. Right. That, that commitment to yeah. what you said you were going to do. Yeah. And I love that you said chip on your shoulder because I felt like I had that too. And I was yeah. like, man, like I am not going to give anybody right? that yeah. pleasure of yeah. saying, I told you, you gave up. Yeah. You know? yeah. yeah. And that's not the only motivation, but it was one for sure. And I think that's probably one of the most motivating, like powerful, like driving forces that you can have yeah. because like I wanted to prove a lot of people wrong, yeah. right? And same thing with me, like what you yeah. just mentioned, family's not entrepreneurial. Yeah. You get told, get a job. Yeah. Like that was a broken record. I heard that every day. Like, are you sure? Every day, yeah. are you sure? Yeah. Are you yeah. sure you want to yeah. stay with us? You're eating yeah. top ramen, are you right? sure? Yeah, yeah. You know, you're a grown man, you're 30 yeah. years old. Yeah, hey, it's six o'clock, why aren't you home? You're like, yeah. Yeah. 
we're, yeah. we're pretty good over time, right? dude. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, man, thank you so much, dude. Uh, I, I do definitely want to do another one. I know we're at about 25 minutes. Sure. Um, but I think this is this is good for now as far as uh, letting people get to know you. What I'm going to do, though, and this is what I want to do, is for the next interview, I want to let people get in the comment section and maybe I'll pick the top five or ten questions. Yeah. And then... Because obviously what Omar does is completely different than real estate, yeah. right? Which is cool because now we're merging different worlds. Um, and I do have a lot of younger people. I'm sure younger people follow you too. And, oh, man, I want to do what you do. Yeah. How did you get started? Yeah. But unless we sit here for three hours, yeah. you know, how are we really going to get all of it out there? You know? No, but you know what? So it's interesting because what, what Brian does is he documents his journey. I didn't do this. And this is, like I said, a critique of mine. And Brian does a fantastic job of like letting people come along with, with the journey and um, and, and watching him, you know, like now sort of crush it in, in what he's doing. But um, what's interesting about watching, watching, watching Brian go through this is um, how willing is he is to bring everybody else along for the ride and how he's willing to teach everyone else sort of like the lessons that he's, that he's learned through this process. But it's absolutely right. You know, unless you live it, it's really difficult to, um, uh, to explain it. Yeah. But it's easier when you watch somebody and you're like, okay, I've heard these stories before, so it's okay for me to experience these things. And I actually, I do this a lot with, with a lot of my friends, and I, I, I encourage everyone to do this right now on their Instagram, for instance. You open your Instagram, and you scroll through it, and you get these like tidbits of people's successes mm -hmm. every single day, and then that's what you measure yourself against, right? Like. And, and, you know, like Brian driving his Lamborghini, I'm driving my Ferrari, so-and-so's flying first class, somebody's taking a vacation, somebody just bought a house. That's, you see these like little tidbits of people's successes, but what you don't get to see is the hard work, the nights mm -hmm. that Brian, you know, like went hungry, the yep. days where he got told no. He literally mm -hmm. probably went through weeks of people telling him no, mm -hmm. months if not months of people telling him no, going broke, literally like making one commission that was like maybe thirty, forty thousand dollars, but he knows if he doesn't like scrimp and save that money that the next one may not come or the next one may be six months from now. And so uh, that journey you don't get to see and I commend uh, Brian for at least documenting some of that so you get to experience it. But I promise you those days are there like you know, when you walk in and like your ads aren't working and you, and it's been six months that you've been running, running whatever ad, whatever campaign, you spent hundreds of thousands of dollars and you have brought in zero dollars and everyone in the company is questioning your leadership mm -hmm. and, and, and your business partners even are like, hey, so are we ever going to make any money on this? <laughs> and, and, and those days will come, but yep. what's in, what it keeps going back to is this common denominator that mm -hmm. Brian and I have and other successful people have is grit. It's this willingness to yep. say, absolutely not. I believe in what I believe. Yep. Stay out of my way. I'm data driven. I've made, I've, I've, I've studied this. I know exactly what I'm doing mm -hmm. and I have the conviction to stand behind it. And as long as you have that conviction and the courage to, to, not let the naysayers sort of like beat you down with their sort of negativity. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. I, th I think that's what it is. But Barney's done a fantastic job like documenting his journey. Yeah. Thank you for that, man. Yeah. So uh, obviously uh, below I can link your Instagram, your YouTube. Is there anything else you want to say? Any other outlet we want to plug before we end the video? No, man. I mean, um, I guess the best way for you guys to get a hold of me is on Instagram, honestly. Um, and I say this a little facetiously, but we have Kenny, my camera guy in here, he'll attest to this. Sometimes even my team members, they can't get a hold of me, they reach out to me on Instagram and then I respond. So um, Instagram really is the best way to get a hold of me. Um, if you have any thoughts or, you know, just shoot me a DM. Um, and sort of accessible in that sense. But yeah, um, if you uh, want, you know what we'll do is maybe we'll give all of your viewers, I'll give you a code for okay. all your viewers. Cool. Yeah? yeah. So we'll give you to Tice.com, right. we'll, we'll give Brian um, a, a specific code that he can plug into you guys. But we call it um, Casella30. Cool. Yeah? yeah. So um, everybody, um, uh, I'll link this. Oh, he can link it mm -hmm. below. Yeah. So Casella30 will give you 30% off on any item on Tice.com. Uh -huh. cool.
Yeah. Yes, sir. People were messaging a lot when you gave me the. the oh, were they asked, really? The oh, that's, awesome. Awesome. Oh, that's so dope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's cool. Yeah, and I appreciate that. That's awesome. Uh, great dude. You know, Omar. I'm um, getting to know him more. Super cool dude. And the the more that because I mean it, we met through Mike. You yeah. know, and like I met him through YouTube, sending him an email. Yeah. Because I watched one of his videos, so it's crazy how the web just keeps growing. And Absolutely. Growing. Yeah. yeah. And and that's like a lot of people. Uh, I just did an interview yesterday. Um, with a guy uh, who people were messaging him. He said he got 30 messages. How'd you get a hold of Brian? He just Facebook messaged me. Is that right? Hey, do you want to interview uh, for your real estate company? Because yeah. he just joined my company. Yeah. I was like, yeah, sure. Why not? Right. Hey, it was that simple. Yeah. So whether it's you, me, Mike, or anybody else, yeah. you know, if you want to reach out to somebody, reach out to him. What's the worst that's going to happen? No. Yeah. No. Right. You know? yeah. I've had people come to my office. Yeah. You know, I'm like, yeah, come by. So uh, Jeff Bezos, um, I, and this is a long, long time ago, just maybe about 10 years ago. He said, you know, people regularly ask him for a business card and he hands it to him, but nobody really reaches out to him. Mm -hmm. And I think to myself, yeah. like, man, that is, who to, who is asking this man for his, you know, for yeah. his, for, for his card and then not reaching, like reaching out to him. Of course, I'm sure the story has changed now, but I will say this, even for my personal story, out of a thousand people that asked me, hey, let me, can I reach out to you? Or I'd like to ask for some advice, or I'd like to do a collaboration. Mm -hmm out of a thousand people, maybe one or two actually follow through. Yeah. And you're just like, don't, don't come up to me. Like, yeah. why are you doing this? Yeah. But Brian's absolutely right. Like anybody who you want to reach out to just simple DM. I promise you most, most of us will read this, but I will say this. If you're asking for something, don't lead with, can you do this for me? Lead with, you know, like do a little bit of research, watch a couple of like Brian's videos, mm -hmm. listen to a couple of his podcasts, engage with them a little bit before you come in for your ask because nothing is more sort of annoying to people like yeah. us who are really really busy when somebody sends this lengthy email and it and all they're doing is asking like 12 yeah. things and you're like um what do you want me to yeah. start bro like, we don't have time to read it either. exactly and then, like one cool thing and this is kind of like a bonus tip is for example people who have been reaching out to me a lot of them will like maybe post that they're watching the podcast and you know you have the feature on Instagram to add to your story. Yeah, yeah. There's some people who have been doing that and I've already taken notice. Yeah. But they're already sharing my stuff. So just like you said, they're yeah. they're giving, they're contributing. Yeah. Yeah. So now if they ask me for something, I'm You're a lot more likely, likely to comply absolutely. and be like, sure, you've yeah. been sharing my podcast, appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. So something as simple as that. Absolutely. You know, because everyone's yeah. like, oh man, how do I get a mentor? How do I get people's attention? Yeah. Well, there you go. Yeah, exactly. You know? Absolutely. So yeah. simple. Follow simple rules. So. Yeah. All right, brother. Thank you, man. Uh, we'll be doing this again. Yeah. Uh, we'll do it from a different room next time. I'll yeah. give you guys some clips. He has a huge, beautiful office. That's mine to shame, but we'll get that no, one day. No. We'll, get, we'll get to the ties.com level one day. Yeah, please. Appreciate it, man. It's safe. Yeah. yeah. Loved it. Very cool. Cool. So, you want